out, that kind of helps him anyway. So, but yeah, no doubt a good night, and I, I did enjoy it. You know, I always enjoy it when they come over. I, I, I'm probably now leaning towards the thing of preferring the house shows than I am, you know, the live like the, like Raw and SmackDown. I just feel like that you get a bit more, mm. you get a bit like different matches that they're afraid to show you on the TV. So, I think I'm preferring the live ones. Yeah, I think um, like I used to get asked a lot of questions like what what do you recommend going to most the TV like what you see on telly or you know when they come over and do the live tours and and you know I, it is it's cool to go and say you've been to Aurora or Smackdown I mean don't get me wrong but I think as far as a live being there live as a fan as a spectator I think I prefer the house show set up and it is purely because they are not having to sort of cut for commercial and come back on and fix this in it's there's a lot of timing in it and it's uh, it can be a, it can take you out in a moment because there's so much like commercials going up and backstage segments and um you know it can be a bit of a rush through sometimes so uh, whereas the live one you know they they are they they can kind of take it a little bit slower uh, you even have an admission but in in the middle of it and it's it's just a bit of a, a kind of an, an easier going experience and I, and I think out of the two like Matt said I I do enjoy um the house show vibe and plus you get matches that aren't currently going on so it kind of gives you a little bit of a break if anything uh, which sometimes you need. Uh, Matt, I'm just looking at the schedule uh, for WWE's calendar because I know you mentioned it at the beginning. I mean, this is how much we got coming up, by the way, people. We've got the next one, of course, WWE Super Showdown Australia, um, the 6th of October, Matt. I mean, fast approaching um, that one, as you can imagine. Um, and then on the 21st of October... Um, We've got the Evolution um, uh, pay-per-view, which is, of course, um, the all-female pay-per-view, Matt. Um, just quickly on this, hearing a lot of things, I don't know how true this is, that it is currently very a, a hard sell. Um, are you surprised by that, Matt? Because I think people thought this, you know, first of the first, should, you know, it should easily get sold out. Or is this just a case that they haven't really given anything where as as to say you know we need to buy it we should be there you know is there really a match that they've kind of put out there yet that says we got to go because i think it's one of those things matt where wwe get a little bit inconsistent you know they they forget you know just because wrestlemania is a household name and some of these other pay-per-views when you start a new thing you know, you have to go back to basics a little bit here, Matt, and kind of put a, a main event on first for people to want to buy it, not just say, well, you're coming to the first ever female WWE presentation. You know, like, that's... For me, that's not enough. That's not enough of a, a, a sell for me to go and want to pay, you know, decent money to go and watch this. I kind of would want a little bit more than just saying to me, oh, it's okay, you're... You're making history because you're going to be one of the first people to see the first ever all female pay per view. So I feel like they they kind of let themselves down by not giving like a, a you know a top billing match for this um, straight off the bat. And I've got to say I've been a little bit disappointed. I know that you know we've got a way to go yet, I guess. But you know it is only next month, Matt. What do you think about all this? Yeah, I, I don't really feel like they're coming into this with any like sort of momentum uh, most of the women that are wrestling there have had some terrible 50-50 looking um, I mean Ronda Rousey is probably the only one that's coming into this thing with a drawing power mm-hmm. and that like, cool, like kind of like clean streak of winning coming into this I mean even someone who else like just under her would be Charlotte but she's just lost to the title you know so it just kind of makes you think like all the all the stuff they're focusing on is stuff that they would use in every other segment you know Smackdown Raw whatever pay-per-views coming up Mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like you're getting anything special out of this I mean I know some old like I don't want to say old but you know former like women's talent is returning to actually Fight. But then, like you said before, it's Lita and, and, and Mickey James. You know, <laughs> it feels kind of like the previous generation. Mm. Um, I mean, it would be good to see Trish. Uh, and but you know, I, I just kind of feel like there's just nothing. Like I said, there's no big draw. It's not like um, 
when we had the first ever Women's Hell in a Cell or the first ever Women's Royal Rumble, I feel like those moments were more important than this first ever women's pay-per-view. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I would buy a ticket to see it if I was in the area, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, there's no sell to me. There's no, like you said, what? Uh, definitely, they need a big main event. At this point, Matt, I mean, if you're WWE, what what is what is the biggest match they can put on as far as the females? I mean, you can't. I, I'm going to say like we, it's not going to be Charlotte and Ronda. Not not this early. They're not going to do that. But I mean, what what have they got left here, Matt? Because you know, I guess people are expecting after this three on three tag match, you know, in Australia, that maybe something's going to happen and maybe that'll filter down. Um, I'm guessing people probably expect Nikki Bella to be involved in something here but um, you know a lot of speculation about Nikki Bella and Ronda Rousey um, in, in the making here Matt but you know is, is that good enough really at the minute or, or are we expecting a little bit more like because I, I get the feeling we may just see Charlotte and and uh, Becky again like you know with their program going on which is fine but um, you know as a sort of marquee match there just doesn't seem to be anything that you know, he's going to really sell this pay-per-view. Um, I mean, if they had to sell this as a pay-per-view, a legit pay-per-view, I think they'd find it's very, very difficult. And it, it shouldn't be that way because we should be kind of embracing this whole movement. But I feel like now we've got it, they've kind of like let themselves down right at the, the pivotal moment of this. Um, and it, it's because they haven't done a good enough job Um, of planning this whole thing out like they should have as soon as this evolution pay-per-view come along I think they just thought oh we'll we're just gonna throw that out and that'll be enough and you know people will be happy but to me that's like I said it's not good enough and I think they do have to you know have um, a marquee match on it what is left there Matt I mean what what, what would you go for just out of uh, just out of thin air there just on top of your head you know, I like to look back on pay-per-views in the future and know that was the time when this happened, that this was the moment. Uh, I feel like they missed a step with this because I feel like now would be the perfect time to have some women's tag team titles. So mm-hmm. I would have said if they had introduced that and that was for the main event and you know, really make them mean something because you know, women's titles now do mean something. There was a long, long time when the women's heavy like their women's title didn't mean much at all so they would use it in terrible ways and mm-hmm. this wouldn't even be defended uh, for weeks and weeks but you know just to come out and say that a women's tag team title would be your main event that would mean something yeah yeah um, well they need something that's for sure I don't know you know what else they've got obviously Trish has been booked Lita's there I don't know they're, they're going to obviously bring other female talent back Matt because again they're doing aren't they doing like a crazy battle royal as well I heard oh so, probably just to make the numbers up yeah got to bring on. back everyone they can yeah so I'm kind of thinking back to the Royal Rumble here I'm thinking like do we need to see another one of these again you know we got the you got the Royal Rumble coming up in January like that that is enough but now of course we're going to have to like to be honest there's not enough female talent really to be pulling these out at the minute I think they stretched it quite a long way even at the Royal Rumble to be honest with you because it felt like 1997 WWF you know like when you used to see the Mexican wrestlers come out in the masks and stuff and he's like who's that now he's not going to win that's what I kind of feel like this is you know they're going to have female talent coming out in masks just to play as other characters I Wonder Triple H made a smart business deal, uh, deal when he's doing the May Young Classic. He's like in the contract. There is a stipulation yeah. he must appear at the Women's Royal Rumble. <laughs> yeah, and that's another thing as well. So, yeah, I mean, so much going on. Um, you know, you just hit on that as well. Not only that, you got the mixed tag match going on again as well with Facebook. I mean, my God, how much more do you want to put in? It is such a confusing time. Uh, to be a WWE fan at the moment, um, and of course, Matt. Um, you know, we finished. You know, Evolution, as I said, twenty first of October. Then straight into November. Yep, WWE hit Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia, and they're returning there again. Uh, same venue again, of course. Um, and of course, the match that we know is going to be there is, of course, the Triple Threat. Um, you know. It, 
a lot of people, Matt, you know, they're going to call a spade a spade. A lot of people emailed in and they say, look, the only reason there's evolution is because they can't get any of the females on this one. Um, and this is just WWE's way of kind of getting out of it a little bit. What do you say to that, Matt? Is it is it a bit of a political thing here? Or do you think there's some, you know, it was legit that they did want this pay-per-view? Or do you think it's just, you know, just kind of coincidence of the timing of all this but uh for, for you i think it is a, is a bit of a coincidence i mean they did want the women's pay-per-view uh and you know arguably they might have had the women's one in the works before mm-hmm. the uh, saudi one but you now i feel like uh they did it before they went to the middle east before and they didn't have women there mm-hmm. and they just dealt with the consequences afterwards and just brushed it off and then mm-hmm. business went on as usual so i don't think they'd be really worried about that because it's kind of one of those things where it's done. It's been done before, so if anything was going to be said, the worst of it would have been said the first time. Yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah, it, it you know, so we got that um, straight away in the second of um, of November, as I said. So that's that's going to be interesting. Um, and then, of course, November traditionally, as we all know, um, happens to be Survivor Series, of course. So that's another load. And then you've got an NXT takeover on there as well, and they're calling that the, the War Games this year. So that's that's going to be interesting as well. Um, it seems like another thing they're going to have to fill up with there. So Survivor Series, 18th of November. Um, and, of course, following that will be the TLC um, to sort of end the year, thank goodness. But um, a lot coming our way, Matt, in such a... The thing is, they're not just pay-per-views. They're like... You know, this super showdown and crown jewel they're like almost like kind of wrestlemania ish type the way they promote it and everything else it's uh they, they really do get a lot of good talent there um i wouldn't be surprised if you even see the likes of john cena come out of nowhere for these kind of things i'm not sure about australia oh, yeah, but they, you know he's booked though isn't he? he's booked um cena and lashley versus elias and uh, oh well, there you go. Owens, isn't it? There you go. Yeah, so. so that's already in there. And like, like whilst we're on the topic though of, of showdown, and mm-hmm. this is booked as Triple H versus Undertaker, the last ever, <laughs> ever, ever this time. <laughs> they said it, they, 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 oh, I don't they know about that. You, last ever time. But then how comes like is, are, are we believing that Shawn Michaels is coming back for a tag team match against the Undertaker? Because then that isn't really the last time though, is it? If they do that. Well, exactly. Um, I mean, it's that's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, it's it's. Oh my goodness, it's so kind of blasé at the moment. I mean, we've got a lot of. I'm going to save that one about Shawn Michaels just because we had a we had a good question on it. So I'm going to save that one that topic for them. But yeah, it's 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 a lot of pay per views, folks, uh, coming up. That's for sure um, that we're going to get through now. As far as this podcast, because people have been saying like, what will you be covering exactly obviously we didn't do hell in a cell i think matt we both agreed we'd probably do evolution um we'd probably stick with that um and you know we'll probably just see what we can get in between the the thing is um with the the australian the only good thing for us uk fans i think it's on a, a nicer time for us matt uh that we can watch it at a decent hour so that'll be kind of good i think I think the Saudi Arabia show, um, the greatest Royal Rumble, I think that started from like 5 p.m. UK time. So that was very different to what we're used to. And I think if we're talking Australia, that's going to be like quite early in the morning. So um, that'll be a different kind of thing as well, like, you know, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. So should be interesting um, for all that. And, um, you know, looking at, you know, where they think things are going to happen and, Will there be any big changes? I don't know. I mean, it it is almost like a glorified house show sometimes, Matt, with these these big you know shows that they're putting on abroad. But you got to figure, Matt, they've got a ten year contract with Saudi Arabia. At some point, we're going to start to see titles change. I think we saw, didn't we see the Intercontinental? T- or was it the tag belts? What title? There was a title that changed it. The Greatest Royal Rumble, wasn't there? I can't remember. Who that was? Oh, yeah. I can't really remember which one it was. It's myself, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure there was um, at that time. So you know, they're not afraid to do that because there was a time where they wouldn't do that, and they'd only want to do it in the US and stuff like that. But obviously, Matt, you know, they know they've got a ten year commitment here. Um, and as Matt alluded to earlier, there's a lot of money involved in this. I mean, when you know, 
the crazy thing about this map, this statistic, and it's absolutely legit, by the way. Um, when I tell you this, Matt, and I know that a lot of listeners will, you know, be flabbergasted, is the fact that what do you make, Matt? That WWE make more money from these shows going to Saudi Arabia than they do wrestling. 